In Chapter 3, we talked about non-operative treatments that are proven to be effective, such as wearing a brace. But despite wearing a brace, your curve may still progress. What is the next step, you ask? Scoliosis experts' opinions may differ regarding when surgery is recommended, but it is definitely something to consider if your spine is continuing to progress into the surgical range. The goals of surgery are to prevent further progression of scoliosis and to correct the spine as much as it can be done safely. When might surgery be recommended? This partially depends on the stage of growth, the location and severity of the curves, the curve pattern, and the surgeon's preference. We have learned that once the scoliosis curve gets to 50 degrees, it will continue to worsen throughout life. For this reason, we begin talking about the option of surgery when the curve reaches 50 degrees. Spinal fusion surgery for scoliosis can be thought of as a preventative surgery. Many children with significant scoliosis have little to no pain or symptoms of the condition. Surgery is reasonable to consider as these curves will continue to worsen, often becoming more symptomatic throughout life. Now that you have an understanding of when surgery might be recommended, let's talk about what is scoliosis surgery? It is a procedure to prevent further progression and correct your spinal curvature. To do that, implants, generally rods, screws, wires, and or hooks, are either made of stainless steel titanium, or cobalt chrome are attached to the vertebrae at the section of the spine that is curved. To help you better understand this procedure, let's look at the common approach called posterior spinal fusion with instrumentation. With this procedure, an incision is made along the spine. Then the surgeons will remove the facet joints. Doing this will help the surgeon see where to place the screws better and allows the spine to be more flexible. Next, screws and or hooks are then attached to the vertebrae at the curved section and the rods are attached to the screws or hooks. These screws and hooks act as anchor points to secure the rods. Notice how the spine has straightened out now. After correction is achieved, Bone graft is used to fuse the spine in its corrected position and can come from a variety of sources. These sources will depend on the surgical approach and will likely include a combination of the bone removed from the spine, such as the facet joints that was removed in the beginning and then the spinous process that you see here. With time, the bone graft fuses or grows together with the existing bone and forms a solid column of bone in that area. The implants hold the spine in the corrected position while the bones are fusing. This generally takes six to 12 months. Okay, you may be wondering, what are some of the side effects of surgery? Well, the section of your spine that has been permanently fused will lose motion and will no longer grow, but the effect is usually unnoticeable. The good news is, you will most likely leave the hospital slightly taller following your surgery from your curve being straightened. Now you may be thinking, how long will the implants stay in your body? Simply put, implants will stay in the body forever. After the bones fuse together, the implants don't really have a job, as the fusion is what maintains the correction. However, the surgery to remove the implants, rods, hooks, screws, is a major surgery and not necessary in most cases. Aside from the common fusion correction of scoliosis, there are new alternative treatments and techniques that are being studied today. To name one, there's a new fusionless correction technique called anterior vertebral body tethering, VBT, which may be an option for certain immature patients with worsening scoliosis. This procedure uses a tether, which is like a strong cord, that is attached to the spine with screws to correct the curve as the patient grows. Because there is no fusion with VBT, more mobility is potentially maintained after surgery. Setting scoliosis straight, 
encourages patients to contact their treating care provider to discuss the relevance of any new information mentioned in this video prior to proceeding with any form of treatment. Remember, no two spines are alike, and your treating care provider should be the most important source of information relating to your scoliosis treatment. For more information about surgery, visit our website at www.settingscoliosisstraight.org and download our free scoliosis handbook today. In the next chapter, we will talk about what you should expect before and after your surgery.